Hello, and welcome to the SciShow Talk Show. It's that day on SciShow where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff. Today, we're talking to Casey Messina from the University of Montana, who has done some amazing, what like feels like blending between organic and biochemistry to me. Yeah, a little bit. So, what are what's your uh, what's your background? Um, I actually have a liberal arts degree, but um, fell in love with chemistry, especially uh, wet oh. chemistry in a lab. I did the opposite of you. <laughs> I was uh, started out with the chemistry degree, and then I went very liberal arts. Okay. <laughs> so that's unusual, though I've seen it happen. Mm. What was your liberal arts degree? I actually studied religion, oh. so uh, a big change. <laughs> yeah, and then you got so you you just like one day you stumbled into a laboratory. Well, I, I wanted to maybe pursue a PA career, career, and in the process uh, took a lot of chemistry. What's a PA? A uh, physician assistant. Oh, okay. So. And so now you're a grad student at UM? Yep. Cool. So you, uh, you're now doing some pretty cool research. I feel like I'm going to say, tell me about that, and then we're going to talk about it for about 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, so if you're not ready for that, get ready for it. Okay. Uh, I find this fascinating and weird. So give me a really weird, like really brief overview. So um, we're the first to use halogen bonding, which we'll talk about in more mm -hmm. detail, to um, kind of uh, enforce the self-assembly of um, three um, molecular strands around iodide. That's pretty mm -hmm. much in a nutshell. So the molecular strands then self-assemble around yeah. iodide ions? Um, yes. And Anions, yeah, in, into a, a, a helix. triple helix. A yeah. triple helix. Yeah. And triple helixes have been created before. Uh, in, plenty, yeah, plenty in, of times. In various, just, various ways. Yeah. Um, but just not with anions. Yeah. Um, only one example before this. Okay. So it's kind of a, a hard thing to do. So you, you build multiple of these strands, mm -hmm. you stick them in a solution with iodide anions, and they just assemble into these triple helixes. Exactly. <laughs> cool. And that is the, the goal of, of the research is to create these triple helixes. The, uh, the, the process of doing it, like how do you even know that you're on the right track? when you're doing this? You, when we're designing the actual yeah. strand? Yeah. Um, well, that starts off actually um, just by thinking, uh, like what can I design? And then you just get a piece of paper, start drawing, um, <laughs> literally. And then you take that to computer modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see it in 3D space. Um, it's a really easy way to manip manipulate it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to work. You actually start making the thing. So there's a lot of, I assume, like good old-fashioned organic chemistry synthesis involved? Yeah, there's tons of that. Yeah. <laughs> it took me quite a long time to make this thing. So yeah. this is your project all on your Yeah, own. and I, 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 I thought, of, thought it up, and I mean, of course, there's a lot of collaboration. But yeah. Yeah, it kind of just came to me one day, and I just pursued it, so. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So um, how, can, can you tell me how many steps are involved? I think, uh, last time I counted, I think it's 12 to 14. I want to say. Okay. So, and each one requires setting up a reaction, uh, running a, a purification, mm -hmm. and then uh, doing it all over again. Yeah. So, it, I think from start to finish, it could take. I mean, if you were just working on that, it'd probably be take like two weeks mm -hmm. to make. So these, I assume, are carbon chains of some kind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Aromatic rings. Okay. Uh, and some of them are electron deficient, which sounds gives it, unstable. <laughs> well, it just it just kind of <laughs> juices up the halogen. Right. So we can yeah. So so you talk about halogen bonding here. Mm -hmm. I assume that there's some kind of you know you want the halogen bonds in a specific place in the molecule so that you'll be uh, having them interact with the with what the iodide in this case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's right. Um, you, and that's what the designing is for. Um, so are the are the halogens going to have a more positive charge? Uh, yeah, or partial positive. Okay. Of, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, actually, the, the strand itself has three positive charges that's so spread out. Oh, okay. It's all conjugated. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to hydro hydrogen bonding. So you have a carbon halogen bond. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but the halogen is super electronegative, so it's pulling. Wait, no. I'm electropositive. Confused. Electropositive. So it's yeah. pulling. So, like, the carbon is pulling the electrons away? Yeah, and the carbon is attached to some some sort of group that's doing that pulling. Oh, okay. So it creates an electropositive region on the halogen, mm -hmm. and that can then um, form non-covalent interactions, just weak interactions with anions or mm -hmm. um, other species. So the iodide anion needs to be in the solution for it to do this thing. Yeah. Um, like, does the iodide sort of create a complex when it like stays in place? Um, yeah. I mean, in in reality, it's probably um, jumping in quick, and out. Yeah, jumping in and out. But if you look at it over time, it's going to spend a lot more time um, mm -hmm. connected to that halogen. So, um, 
and that's what the bond is. So. So when you say that this idea came to you, mm -hmm. what were you? What was your like thinking? What was the goal? Yeah. So I actually wanted to make a, a different version of this molecule, mm -hmm. and I tried to make it, and uh, it kind of came to a, a cul-de-sac, and so <laughs> this was kind of a plan B, and so that's what the inspiration was. Like, oh, I could I could make a strand instead, and that's what I did. So. So as a chemist. Like when you're sitting down and thinking about this stuff, mm -hmm. what makes a molecule, makes an idea seem exciting? Like something that you want to go after and spend, you know, more than two weeks developing a 14-step process to, to develop it. I think you always want to bring something to the table. You don't want to make a molecule that's derivative or, mm -hmm. or copying somebody else. Um, and you're standing on other people's shoulders, so it's a really collaborative process. And yeah. the halogen bonding community is very supportive. It's mm. people all over the world. And, um, and so it's kind of a fun, um, collaborative, exciting process where you, you think, well, what, else, what can I do that's new? And, mm -hmm. and how can this maybe eventually lead to an application? So those are kind of the motivations behind it. Cool. Do you uh, have any potential applications in mind? Yeah, so, I mean, there are, there are a lot. I mean, if any, any, any time you can make kind of a well-defined, large shape, um, it, it can have a lot of applications. But, one specific one is, um, you know, all of our cells have these membranes, mm -hmm. and they kind of rely on large proteins to um, channel ions in and out. And um, if, if, that, if those processes go wrong, you could end up with a disease like cystic fibrosis. And so mm -hmm. organic chemists are trying to design um, uh, synthetic channels or carriers mm -hmm. to serve as treatments for this. But kind of like the bottleneck right now is making huge structures, and in this case, large tubular structures that can go into the membrane and do this, this transport of mm -hmm. ions. It's actually really hard synthetically. But the idea is um, if you can make one long strand, which is comparatively simple, it's two-dimensional, mm -hmm. um, then and let self-assembly do the rest of the work, then you're a lot closer to that goal. So that's one possible application. Absolutely cool. Um, I was once upon a time a chemist, and I was, you know, maybe I was a younger man. One of the most exciting things for me was always knowing which was the most dangerous thing I was messing with uh, when I was doing <laughs> yeah, I doing, that. doing wet yeah. chemistry. So, what is the most dangerous thing That's a good, good that, question. That involved in this particular? Um, to put a charge on these strands, we use something called uh, methyl triflate, and it's um, it's not like phosgene or anything, but. Yeah. Uh, but basically, if you spill it on your hand or were to eat it, which <laughs> you would don't do that. Never do. Uh, <laughs> You're not doing a lot of pipetting by mouth, I hope. <laughs> yeah, they've outlawed that. Um, so basically, if you were to ingest it somehow or get, on, get it on your hand, it, it could potentially uh, methylate your DNA, which oh, could yeah. lead to cancer. Yeah. So, so it's so dangerous. It's a, but you're not regularly afraid for your life? Um, I feel like chemists have a slightly shorter than average lifespan. Not to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not too scared. I'm, I'm not as cavalier as some of, some of my lab mates. Yeah. Um, like I, I have a, a co-author, uh, Nick, is just fearless. <laughs> and he's just like, I don't care. <laughs> and then I'll always say, well, we should be careful. And he always just responds like, you're going to die of something someday. <laughs> just, uh, I don't quite get the logic of that, but yeah. anyway. No, I don't, I don't yeah. fearless in the chemistry lab, not necessarily mix particularly well. Yeah. For sure, there, for was sure. a, uh, yeah. there was a spot in my lab when I was in school where there's just blood on the <laughs> ceiling. And you're like, how to get up there? <laughs> how to get up there, though? Like, I understand, <laughs> but up there? Anyway. Do you have any uh, theories? <laughs> uh, no, I did find out one day. A vacuum oh, okay. desiccator oh, exploded. Oh, okay. Um, wow, really? Or imploded. Imploded, yeah. And hit somebody hard enough that an... Uh, oh, oh, from that, like, the, oh, wow. That, okay. like, that, like an actual artery spurted. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty scary. Yeah, but that was yeah. years before I came in. I just had never cleaned the, the ceiling. Yeah, well, that's, unf that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So can we check out the paper if we're interested in your chemistry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think... Yeah, we'll just put a link in the description. Yeah, so cool. um, if you want to read it, <laughs> it's kind of um, a lot of jargon, but yeah. if you get through that, it's... Does it outline the whole synthesis process? Yes, it does. Great. Well, uh, now it is time for, if you're interested, uh, to be visited by an animal of some kind. Sure. Uh, it's a non-human animal, and I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> but let's say hello to it. Cool. Who do you think? Where are we? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> How are your ears? <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is a long distance communication strategy. Yeah, that's, that's one of them. Yeah, I think, I think this is just excitement. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm not even he, trying to make that noise. This is just normal. This okay. is just, I mean, he has a, he does a quieter chatter, but uh, this is this is just really normal. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He he can scream and do a, the the big old alarm calls, which are <laughs> much louder than that. Oh, okay. This is so a Jendea parakeet. Okay. Whoa. Also well, known as a Jende conure. Yeah, I would have said that was a conure. Yeah. So conures are parakeets. Oh, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> what would you have called this bird? Um, a, par a parakeet, probably. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think they're like, oh, colorful, it's a parrot. Yeah. Right? Um, so then it has a lot, it looks like a parrot has a long tail, it's gonna be a parakeet. And uh -huh. then if that parakeet originates in South America, oh. then it's a conure. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. These guys are loud. Very healthy. What do you think? You're so bright and pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you wanna you wanna hang out with Hank? Really? Are you gonna, oh yeah, you're perfectly happy. Yeah, he's a good boy. A as long as you give him treats. Okay. Oh man, my left hand. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just. Gonna, I know. I always. What do I do? You can do that. Okay. You can do that. He'll you're gonna be. Oh yeah, you're crunch. so gentle. He's a good boy. Yeah. Um, because it looks a little like your mouth could tear a man apart. <laughs> Maybe not a like. No, but like I wouldn't want that on my finger. Yeah, yeah, it could hurt. He he could break the skin. He's like he can't break a bone. Um, yeah. There there are bigger, um, larger birds that can, like yeah. a, like a parrot or a like an Amazon parrot or a macaw could could definitely break your bone. But okay. but yeah, not not that strong. But these guys are actually one of the loudest in uh, the Cytocene family, which is oh. the parrot family. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they you all out. Look how gentle he is. Yeah, he's, he's a so good, good bird. He is. What is uh what is what is he like? What does he like? Yeah, like, besides like seeds. besides seeds, um, like cuddling or neck know, scratches. You know, his his favorite thing in the world. What you want some more? Or do you want do you want to try holding them? I would them? love to try. Yeah. Hey, ah, yeah, very yeah. exciting. So you are you left or right handed? Uh, right handed. You're right handed. Oh, yeah. So put the treats okay. in your right hand, unlike yeah. I did for for poor Hank who had to do it backwards. <laughs> All right, so just one big finger out. There you go. Oh, cool. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So his favorite thing besides seeds is probably his best friend. Um, his, I mean, not really a mate because it's a male too, but yeah. like they're, they're going to be bonded like bonded. mates. Yeah. Mm. Um, so these guys are really social in the wild, and uh, his best friend is actually a different species of conure. It's a half moon conure, mm. um, but but they bond just just as well. Just mm. like I mean, there's interspecies bonding between sure. these guys. They'll bond to humans too. That's great. Um, he so he's got Lulu just a better. really big friend. He does. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Well, Lulu's a little bit, a little bit smaller than him. Well, that's that's good too, because maybe really good. maybe you don't need to spend so much socializing time. Exactly. He's yeah. Got a nice friend. And so yeah, and if they get out of like, if they're a little bit farther away, they'll both like lean towards each other and be like, "I want to be by you." Oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, and then if they if they uh, like get out of sight, then they'll start contact calling back and forth. Mm -hmm. Come here, buddy. Look back. Hi. That's You're awesome. a good boy. Yeah. Expat. I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Bought actually locally at uh, PetSmart, and um, <laughs> two things happened. Well, he was loud. Yes. These guys are super. They're like one of the loudest. They are the loudest conures. I mean, sun conures and Jendea conures are 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 the Some loudest. Yeah. Also, the dander from his feathers, new growth. They have like um, a sheath over their feathers, and then they groom it off, and it be, and it turns into dust. And their dog was allergic to it. <laughs> Their dog was allergic little, to their this bird. This poor little dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was trying to help them with their dog too, and I finally realized that they just couldn't live in the same house. And, oh, interesting. Um, so, so we took Ecuador in, and um, yeah, he's been living with us since. And uh, hi, buddy. You did good. He bonded right to, to Lulu. Mm. And mm -hmm. so he, he knows one, we've been working on one, we call them behaviors. Some people call them tricks, I call them behaviors. We've been working on one, and, and, and we'll see if he wants to do it. You, you want to try? Ready? One, two. No, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> one, two, three, bang! Hey! Oh, wow. I, I, have, I have, yeah, that's you gave him a round of applause. Good job, <laughs> that was, buddy. That was awesome. And now I'm just gonna. Good, huh? Great. <laughs> And I'm just gonna hang here and have a seed. Yum. I don't mind being upside down. No. That's a bird. Crazy. He does that all. I mean, these guys are awesome. They have these cool zygodactyls feet, mm -hmm. um, two toes on the front, two toes on the back, so they can just flip on over. Mm -hmm. Am I going down there? Get it. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. nice work. <laughs> oh, look at that red belly. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're something. Yeah. Do you wanna try and get him to tip upside down in your finger? It's pretty fun. Okay. There you go. Now put your thumb over one of his toes. 
my thumb. Yep. Oh, I didn't like that idea. <laughs> it won't, it's like, don't touch me. Like that. Like... No, don't. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't trust yeah. me the way he trusts you. No. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Do you yeah. want to try? Let's see. If I don't know. Nice. I it's you too advanced. Too, <laughs> <laughs> it is actually. It takes, oh, am I being too loud? I know. I know. That was a bit of an alarm call because I was mm. getting loud and he's going, I need to be loud too. Huh. Let's be so loud together. Amazing. It's actually That's interesting me. because <laughs> it's advanced. It's too advanced. It's easy for me to do it, but um, it, it takes, uh, we have interns that come in and I teach them how to handle the birds, and it's one of the, the it is a little bit more of, of an advanced move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To hold the bird yeah. in place. To hold, to hold them up, get them yeah. to tip upside down in a comfortable way, forward, and then also backwards. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You're like a bird juggler. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Yeah, yeah. These guys can live to be like 30 years, and people buy them as pets all the time. I mean, they're they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. right? um, and people see them in the pet store window, and they usually get them as babies, and they have like they have a baby look. They have like these big pupils and the cute little face, and and they come up and they're like, "What's that?" And they they yeah. play with people through the through glass or bars, and then they get them home, and they hit like two years old. Screaming they all mature the time. Yeah. and they're like, "Give me attention! You didn't get a second one. You know, you're my mate, and you need to stay with me all the time. Right? And if you're not, I'm gonna scream because I want you to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a, th a thirty-year-old bird. That's and have hard them for thirty years. And they're they're pretty darn intelligent. Um, they can learn. Who do you see? They can learn. Um, you know, basic basic things like dogs can. Um, Except they're just they're more intelligent than dogs. Um, <laughs> they're like they're like a one year old human, one to two year old human, um, but for thirty years. Yeah. Take you don't. Uh, yeah. Who wants a two year old for thirty years? No. Um, a year is even long if it's, enough. Even if it's very pretty. <laughs> even if it's very Super pretty. pretty. Who's that? And doesn't eat very much. Oh, oh thank the you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at least you missed. <laughs> it missed everything. All, all oh no, us. there yes. it is. Oh, yeah. Ooh, nice. It's good. It's not on the carpet. Nicely Great. done. What do you see of the here? More treats. Yep, that's all. That's the only. That's, that's the what only he wants. Choice. That's uh, what he wants. Thanks for visiting. Yeah. You're the best. Can I come say hi? Yeah. To you? Do another. Do yeah. another little here. Yeah, okay. Come here. Come here. Oh, 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 oh. I know, I know I'm a stranger, but thank you for visiting us here on the SciShow Talk Show. Uh, thank you, Jesse, for coming on. If you want to see more of what Jesse's up to, you can go to her YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Animal Wonders Montana. Um, and it was a pleasure to have you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. And thank you for watching. If uh, you want to see more of this kind of thing, I know you do. You can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. He was 70, he threw a bowling ball at her head, and he hit her. And she said, that shows it takes a thick skull to be the sister of a world famous physicist. <laughs> <laughs>